Hello, welcome again to the Mindful, Beautiful and Thriving podcast series focused on youth mental health by Tharika Foundation. I am Dr. Lena Khanzode, a child psychiatrist, your host for today. And again with me is Gayatri Narayanan, a mindfulness instructor and educator here in the Bay Area. So we've been talking about mindful parenting. You know, Gayatri has beautifully helped us lay down some foundation on mindful parenting. What's the science behind why and how does that work? We've covered those in the last two episodes and we're going to continue talking more about more hands-on skills related to mindful parenting. How do I do this in my day-to-day life? I think the best way to understand that is go through like an example of a day-to-day life. And so Gayatri, I am struggling parenting my teen right now. She's 14 years old and I am having moments of just extreme frustration, anger, and just you know, even yelling and screaming, which I obviously don't like. Mm -hmm. And when that happens after that interaction, which is so unpleasant, I'm so disturbed. And I, it doesn't make me feel good because that's not how naturally I am. Like I want to be nice to everyone, including my own like precious child. But then there are moments when I just lose it. And I feel like, you know, I I can't justify like, it's like, she creates events or situations where I, I'm bound to lose it. It's kind of, that's what I'm struggling with. Like, am I bound to lose it? Or is there a way for me to not lose it and do something differently? First thing to know is that you're not alone, right? This is part of being a parent. And there is no perfect parent. And we will all have moments where we lose it, where we say things we don't want to say. And, you know, we have disconnection with our children. But the beautiful thing about this paradigm of parenting with mindfulness is the first aspect is just self-compassion. And there's a lot of practices around self-compassion that's part of this parenting model to be kind to yourself and to learn how to then repair that relationship when something goes wrong. So it's not so much about the fact that, yes, something happened and you lost it, but okay, what do you do from there? How do you grow from there? How do you bring more awareness to what's happening within you? and then heal that relationship. Uh, So I just want you to know that this is absolutely a journey. And even even after practicing for many months, it's always going to be a situation where you take three steps forward, two steps back, five steps forward, four steps back. It's just the way it goes. To bring a lot of compassion to yourself and to know that that's how it's going to be, you know, that's how parenting is. But yeah, I'd love to hear your example of what happened with your daughter and how we can use some of these tools of mindful parenting to work with that. Yeah. Thank you, Gayatri. That was very reassuring. I'm already feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're very right. We are always so hard on ourselves, And, you know, I feel like, oh, you know, I'm a child psychiatrist. I better know how to parent my daughter. And then I lose those moments. And then I'm like, what am I doing? Right. But mm-hmm. of course, when I'm a parent, I'm not the child psychiatrist, right? Yeah, I am there who gets caught up in that dynamic of relationship. So here's what happened. It was uh, this last Sunday evening, winding down for the week. I wanted to really have some relaxation time in the evening. I, I knew I was hitting a very busy week at work. So we were winding down and, you know, late in the evening comes my daughter and says, hey, mom, I'm so sorry. We need to make a quick trip to Target because she needs some supplies for her school project. And so, you know, I was, like I said, my, my set of expectations from that evening was, oh, I'm just going to like chill. I don't need to dress up. I need to go anywhere. I need to, don't need to drive. I'm just like, you know, winding down and getting ready for the upcoming week. But nonetheless, I had to get going with her. And so it was so frustrating, honestly, in that moment that I just lost it. And I basically started yelling at her and like, why can't you plan ahead? Is this the time at the end of the week on Sunday evening when I'm trying to finally kind of put my feet up and relax? That's when you tell me to make this trip. Why can't you use your planner? I've told you so many times to like 
plan your projects and put when will you learn to be organized how how's this going to be i'm so worried about you how are you going to get through high school and i just went on and on you know i i just can't believe all the things i said in that moment and then of course that certainly wasn't something she was going to just hear quietly right being a teen so she <laughs> started expressing her frustration about like she coincidentally had other things going on you know she's, she's doing a debate class on weekends and they have a tournament so she's been working on preparing for that with her friend so she was quite busy it wasn't like she was whiling away but nonetheless i think she felt like i wasn't like doing this intentionally i was busy she had her own things to do and so basically the whole ride to target was just all this yelling match back and forth and we got the supplies and i kind of somehow managed to sleep but you know i i was quite disturbed and then next morning also i was quite like unhappy about how this whole thing went mm-hmm. yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know and even as you're speaking about it like right now if you just tune into your body and you just you know take a moment to just pause and just watch the emotions that are playing out in the sensations in your body right you can actually tune in and get in touch with those feelings of disappointment or frustration and all the things that you were talking about uh they get kind of regenerated in the body even as you're speaking about it and you can tune into that and you can feel it you can sense that that helplessness the frustration the annoyance uh, and the regret right afterwards you felt bad about it So one of the tools that we use in mindful parenting which I actually learned from Echo Parenting and Education in Los Angeles when I was being certified as a parent educator so they have this acronym called of needs it's O F N E E D S of needs so the letter O stands for observations right making observations so the first step before you even say anything is to actually become present connect with your body connect with what's happening in your external environment and make observations of what's actually going on externally and internally within yourself so the first thing you notice is like you probably would have noticed is your internal response which was just a frustration you know i'm just ready to put up my feet and have an evening to myself maybe watch a couple of shows have a glass of wine i was just so much looking forward to just relaxing at the end of a long week and here comes my daughter right so you just feel that agitation and that irritation that comes in the body mm-hmm. so you can tune into that and so part of the mindfulness skills that we learn is learning how to tune into sensations in the body so you'll feel the tightness in the belly the heaviness in the chest and you know just the throat tightens and all of that happens so you can notice that happening physically within yourself but you can also then connect with what's happening with your daughter and you can notice what's happening with her you can see the stress on her face the sense of panic about oh my god it's due tomorrow and i haven't done anything about this project and i'm stressed about it because i need to turn it in tomorrow so you immediately recognize and observe what what you can see with your eyes what you can hear with your ears and you tune into your own body so that's the first step is observations then the next letter f is feelings and then the next one is n needs so so the next two steps is actually just connecting with the feelings and needs of both your child and yourself so you can immediately notice is like oh okay i'm really feeling frustrated i'm getting annoyed you know i'm i'm losing my patience i can notice that and i can name the feelings that i'm having i can also name my needs so in that moment as a mom as a as lena what you were needing was rest relaxation some calm some peace that i'm just guessing that was probably some of your needs in that moment absolutely yeah right and and then once you connect with your own feelings and needs you can offer yourself a little bit of self compassion in a moment self empathy so the minute you connect with your own feelings and needs there's already a sense of calming a sense of relief that comes from that step of just connecting with your own needs and feelings and then you can then start to guess and empathize with what's happening with your child right so you have observations feelings and needs and then the first e of the needs is engaging so you engage with yourself right 
you offer yourself the empathy, you offer yourself the compassion, you know, if you need to get a glass of water and drink it, or like, you know, just take a pause, you can do that. But that's just basically making sure that you are ready to engage with your child. So that's that step of engaging, right? And then this next step is empathy, right? So you are actually then expressing your empathy to your child. You're, you're articulating and guessing what her feelings and needs may have been in that moment. So you could, just, you could just guess and say, hey, are you stressed about this project for tomorrow? You know, I can see that you're really worried and stressed. And I wonder if you're worrying about what the teacher is going to say to you tomorrow, you know, if you don't turn it in. You know, so you can just sort of even mentally kind of connect with her needs for support for you to take her to target. She needs your support and she needs your understanding. And you can also connect with the fact that she's a 14-year-old or a 15-year-old who hasn't fully developed that executive functioning of learning how to plan ahead of time, making sure that she's got things in order, that she's managing her time with her debate practice and her homework. So a lot of those skills are actually not yet fully developed in a kid her age, right? So when you are able to recognize that, then it's easier for you to empathize with her and say, hey, you know, I can see that you you didn't plan, you know, what you needed to do. And now you're in this situation and you're really frustrated and you're scared that you're not going to be able to do it. And so the minute you can connect with her and empathize with her, she also kind of calms down, right? And when she's calm and you're calm, then you can teach her the value of planning, of all those executive functioning skills that you want her to learn, you can then have a conversation with her about that. Hey, if you had uh, done this on Friday, uh, do you think it would have gone better? Like, you know, how would you have done it differently if you had to do it over? How could you have planned your day for debate and this, right? So now you can come up with problem solving. So the DS is developing solutions. So it's observations, feelings, needs, identifying feelings and needs, engaging with yourself, and then empathizing with your child, and then developing solutions. So the solutions actually come at the end. So typically what happens is a lot of us try to solve the problem first, even before we take the time to be present and to empathize, right? So of course, part of the solution may be, okay, getting into a car and driving to Target, which is, which is annoying, but maybe still needs to be done. Uh, but part of the solution is then developing skills so that this doesn't happen again and that she can actually learn those skills to manage her time and manage her priorities and do her homework. So that's how you would use a tool like of needs. But I want to just mention here that, you know, it's taken me this long to explain it, but actually it's all of this happens in a matter of a few seconds. This happens fast. It's like you immediately connect, you know, you can identify feelings and needs. The empathy takes 10 seconds. The developing solutions may take a few minutes of a conversation, right? But it doesn't really take that long. It's actually a, it's a quick process of like actually just becoming present and learning how to communicate and articulate your empathy. Yeah. That's so awesome. Wow. I hope that helped. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm going to start practicing it. So like you said, you know, it should be accessible to you in the moment because it just happens all in a very few seconds. Yeah. So just, just to kind of repeat the tool, what Off Needs is all about. So our listeners walk away with that and try to practice this. O stands for observation. F stands for being in touch with feelings and needs of your own self and in your child. E stands for engaging with your own self and your own experience, mm -hmm. and then using that to empathize with your child, the second E. Mm -hmm. And then when we do this, we are in a position to then develop solutions. Right. So that's, that's a great acronym and a great tool. Thank you, Gayatri, so much for you know, helping us with that. Thank you, Lena. Thank you for joining us. You're listening to the podcast series by Tarika Foundation. And it's called Mindful, Beautiful and Thriving. Stay safe and healthy till next time.